Hello everybody, it's a good day and it's an even better day to do another portfolio review. Now, the main goal of these portfolio reviews on the channel, no, I don't spam them for views and money. And while that is a big part of it, at the same time, it is a good message and it promotes transparency. It shows that my viewers and my viewership, the people that watch my videos, have more transparency and overall a bigger ball sack than some of the big finance channels that are charging hundreds of dollars for courses and investment advice. The only thing that I charge you is your pride after watching three mid-roll ads throughout the video. And today we're going over Mac daddy's portfolio that he sent over to me on discord and guys if you want me to go over your portfolio you want the blessing of my opinion just do it over on twitter at ryan dengler show or the link in the description to the discord and direct message me from there and the only thing that's good from australia is alex volkanovsky and margaret robbie let's get into the video though regardless hello i like money all right you know it's going to be a good portfolio update when he says hey mate please consider reading my portfolio Mac Daddy shares that he's a 25-year-old guy from Australia and that he's been investing since the start of 2022. He has two different portfolios. The first is in Australian index funds, VGS and VAS. He puts away a set amount of money that he pays into his paycheck every two weeks to a month. Very easy to do, and he doesn't have to worry about it much. Good to see. I like that a lot. His second portfolio is on stake, which is an interesting brokerage. I don't think we've had a brokerage of stake that we've gone over yet, so that's definitely interesting. He says that he invests any spare money that he has into these individual U.S. stocks. A lot of popular picks on here, but he mostly tries to buy very good quality companies, good growth potential, cash flows, and all the other good stuff you want in business. He tries to buy them when the value is near the lower side, with an exception depending on how much risk he's willing to take. With Visa, for example, he's recently started buying at the current prices, even though it's not very undervalued. So more of it's like buying really good businesses at fair prices. He doesn't really set metrics or numbers when he buys things. He usually just buys it when he thinks they're going to do well. He also shares that VAS is like Australia's version of the S&P, but the top 300 Australian companies. And VGS is around 60% of some other countries' of stocks in there. He also shares that he doesn't invest solely for dividends, but hey, he'll take it if they're there and I think that's a really good way to look at it I think when I stopped looking at dividends as free money and an added return and more looked at it as a supplement to my total return and kind of something that just comes along the way as the wealth growing process kind of happens I think that's what day that I really matured as investor and I'm happy that he's viewing it from that perspective the Aussie portfolio is 27 grand and the stake portfolio is 8,800 USD. Here are the Aussie portfolios with the ETFs in there and I don't really have much to say. He's had some good gains and I think it's the best way to passively grow your wealth for any person. It's what I recommend to everybody and assuming that the S&P 500 is very similar to this index that you shared, it's a solid option. You can't go wrong with it. So that's what I would primarily focus on if I were you. Here's the fun portfolio on stake, which he's currently up 28.22% on. To start off, we have S&P Global. He currently owns $1,118.58 with S&P Global, and he is currently up 30.64% on S&P Global. Now, I bought S&P Global about two weeks ago when it was trading around $445. It is now at $480, and it just shows why you shouldn't try and time the market when you're buying amazing quality businesses. Thank you to Resi for encouraging me to buy. The world is always going to need data, and S&P Global is one of the top data providers. This is a really high-quality company. You can't go wrong with it. Now, I have had some people ask me about S&P Global's free cash flow, why it hasn't been consistent, why it's actually gone down the last few years. Simple answer is they've made some acquisitions in their business to hopefully grow the cash flows over time that's going to temporarily have a hit on their free cash flow, so that's why. That's also most likely why they hiked their dividend only like 0.7% last year. Long-term, though, it's an amazing business, and I expect a lot of growth with it. I was blessed off to start off my my position at about $340, but it's really ran up in price since then, and I've had a hard time buying some more. Speaking up of another company that I bought at a low price and has absolutely ran up where I can't buy any more, another small position in the portfolio, Texas Roadhouse. He is currently up 79% on Texas Roadhouse, which is similar to where uh, my gains are at right now as well. It's really weird with Texas Roadhouse. It's a really small position in my portfolio personally, and it's just one of those things I'm going to hold on to for now. Eventually, it'll recover to a fair price, and I'll have to buy more then. But really simple, effective business model with Texas Roadhouse. That's all I got to say with it. Good holding. At what point, though, do you want to take gains? I think that's a question you got to ask yourself. But for me right now, I'm most likely holding. Next, he owns Ulta Beauty, which he is down 4% on. And Ulta Beauty is another hot topic in the Discord link in the description. I don't have any thoughts on it whatsoever. I get enough exposure through Target, so I'm keeping my hands off for now. But an interesting play for that's for sure. But a company that I do have my hands on, and I got my hands on it a lot, which is Visa, stock ticker V. 
Visa, he is currently up just 0.9% on right now. Visa is one of the highest conviction companies that I currently own in the portfolio, and I've been building the position around that sentiment. It's an incredibly strong company. I don't need to worry about it. It's never going to go out of business, in my opinion. Consistently, largely grows their cash flows, grows their dividend in an aggressive pace with a low payout ratio, and buys back shares. Looking financially, it's one of the strongest companies in the entire world, and I just go to bed feeling really good about owning this company. I've sold out of some companies at some pretty big losses just to build up my Visa position right now. I think it's an amazing quality business that's at a fair price right now. It's all I have to say. I love it so much. Next, he owns Vici, and right now we're actually seeing some really nice gains with real estate in Vici as interest rates are hopefully going to recover soon. But Vici's an awesome company. I've already been seeing some nice capital appreciation with it. But long term, I'm really excited where I can get with it, especially considering I was loading up at the 27 to $28 range. Assuming some capital appreciation and some dividend hikes go through with Vici, I'm looking at a really really nice yield on cost, possibly around 9 to 10%. Veach is an awesome experiential based real estate player and I love having it in my portfolio and I've been building it up recently. Vici currently makes up around 8% of the portfolio right now, and I'd like to have it around 10 to 11, but I'd like to buy more around 28. Definitely recovery play though, but I like this holding a lot. Speaking of another company that makes up about 10% of my portfolio personally, it's Apple. Apple's had an absolutely insane run-up as of recently. I can't believe just a few months ago, I was able to buy Apple to $168. That's why you buy amazing businesses when they go on a dip. But Apple's currently up 65.2% in his portfolio, and I have similar gains in mine. Apple's innovation is just on a different level. When everybody thinks that they can't come out with a new revolutionary product, they do. Tim Cook is the best CEO in the world right now, in my opinion. I'll never doubt the company, but I am kind of doubting the valuation right now. It's at a really hefty valuation, especially with this little AI run-up they've had recently. I'm holding on to my Apple for now. Next, he owns Adobe, and he's currently up 20.37% on Adobe. Adobe's facing some lawsuits right now. Could be an interesting recovery play, but I'm not touching it. Now, here's a company that I may or may not have just added a position to around an hour and 30 minutes ago. It is Amazon stock ticker AMZN. Amazon is currently up 83.15% in his portfolio. Amazon's such a strong quality business. Uh, I have no comment on whether I potentially just bought some or not, but I love it. Great holding. Next, he owns Salesforce, stock ticker CRM, another solid quality company that I need to be pitched to from Aria still. Solid business, and assuming that he got in at some decent prices when it went on a dip about a month and a half ago, he could be looking at some nice gains right now. Next, he owns Google, which is currently up 66.7%. Another awesome quality business I'd love to buy if it went on a dip, but I get plenty of exposure through SHG. Next, he owns GoPro, and I don't like this holding that much. He has really nice gains on it. I'd personally sell it. It's not a great company in my opinion. Small position, though. Next, he owns MSCI, quality company, consistent earnings, and consistent current cash flows. I have nothing to complain about here. I think it's a solid holding. And lastly, he owns Microsoft, which he's up 91% on. Microsoft's an awesome company at the end of the day, and it has had a bit of a bubble run up recently with the whole AI business, but Microsoft's core business and Xbox potential, in my opinion, is still so strong. Microsoft, on average, grows their dividend about 10% a year, buys back shares, and overall has an amazing management team as well, led by Satya Nadella. Overall, I think it's a solid portfolio, except GoPro in it. You have some really solid gains on a bunch of your companies, so I'd be curious to hear your philosophy on potentially selling out, trimming, taking gains, whatever. Overall, though, I like the portfolio a lot. Thank you to Mac Daddy for submitting his portfolio. Once again, you want to submit your portfolio, do in the Discord, link in the description. Send me a friend request and message me from there, or DM me on Twitter at Ryan Dangler Show. Thank you for watching. Smash the like button, subscribe, and do dividend stocks, not drugs. Have a good one.